great start. We've lost Bex already. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Dophie's very squeaky this week, so she had to be locked away. <laughs> She's off the crew. She's not welcome anymore. She's not part of the team. She's not welcome. No more guests. No. no. (laughs) Don't work with children or animals. Amazing. Well, welcome to episode five. Five, I think so, yeah. Five. Blimey. Good number. Episode five. This is like becoming a habit. That's a good (laughs) thing. And it comes down all too quickly. (laughs) So episode five of uh, the Spen and Beck show, which is, um, yeah, bloody brilliant. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about startup accelerators and incubators, right? Yes, yes, yes. Both have experience of them in very different ways, don't we? Yeah. So I've been run a startup that was inside an accelerator. Um, we got some funding from Founders Factory which I think is like generally perceived as one of the leading or if not the leading, perhaps incubators and accelerators. They've got two programs actually separate um, for, for, for startups in the UK, actually in the UK, but also they've got offices now and like a presence in America, maybe Singapore, a couple of, I think Italy, they just opened last week. So yeah, they're going, uh, going global and they were um, founded by uh, Brent Hoberman who started lastminute.com with Martha Lane Fox back in the dot-com bubble and then made.com recently, more recently. But yeah, it'd be good to talk about that experience, but also your side, which is more from um, kind of running them or being involved in the coaching and support. Like, Yeah, so I have, um, I've got various backgrounds. So at the moment I teach in a blockchain chain incubator. Um, I go down there and talk about problem solution fit um, and try and get the founders to really understand what evidence they need ahead of um, investment pitches, et cetera. Um, and then prior to that, I worked in a co-foundry. So we co-created businesses. Um, and there I was on, um, I helped shape the program, shape the approach, um, was yeah, very much aligned with founders, worked with them day to day for sometimes years, um, just making sure that we were, we're getting that movement, getting that momentum. Um, so yes, I've been the other side of the fence. So yeah, like I think that's one of the things when I was, part of founders factory was just you get this um, access to incredible people right um and there was i had a product coach i had kind of a marketing person i had a data person that i could go to i uh, had like operations people and then there's just this kind of network of people that are awesome for advice but also might be able to help help out as well and that might have been something which is unique and i've got this very narrow view i guess of being actively engaged in that with a startup um, but yeah that's how they kind of ran things they had these specialists but they also kind of almost um, had the board kind of taken care of as well so you had the uh, fiduciary kind of duty if you like taken care of through kind of a mock or a, not really a mock board but like a um, uh, a, a proxy for a board I guess um, so yeah like we, that we support a is thing. invaluable yeah, yeah, it really is. And I think there's there's a lot of different people take a lot of different approaches. You know, some in, um, incubators you need to go into with a specific idea. Other ones, it's very much founder led where you go in and they give you X amount of time to try and find an idea. Um, lots of different approaches. And even if you go in with a specific idea and actually it just kind of dissipates or you end up pivoting it's often the founder themselves that they're really interested in they want the, you know, the back of a horse in the race so it might be a case they have a great idea and go or it's a case of like you're fantastic as a founder we want to work with you let's just work out you know what we need to do um either go away and come back with some new ideas whatever it may be so there's lots of very different approaches out there lots of very different styles um and it all depends on the personal fit and i think for me like, I love them. I think they're, they're great. You know, I'm a, I'm a coach at heart. Um, I also like being hands-on. I like, you know, people being supported and, and you know, having that approach. And it's tough. Like, startups are tough. Starting any new thing is tough. Um, so you need that, that wraparound support. But other ones, you know, it's very much a case of a check-in. So I know I spoke to a lady... Um, I was trying to recruit her, actually, a few years ago. And she was like, oh, I look after, like, 50 startups. And I was like, are you magical? I mean, how do you do that? And but it was a case of she just used to check in. And for me, if it's if it's purely accountability and actually you know your staff, 
fine. But I think you've got to go in knowing what you really need and, and want. If you're a first-time founder, you know, what pitfalls am I looking to avoid? What's the process? You know, I'll learn things like, um, you know, the lean startup and design thinking and all these kind of like amazing frameworks and approaches that will really equip you well for your journey. Um, or maybe it's just a network that you need to leverage or it's just cold hard cash. And, you know, it depends what stage you are, who you are, what you can do. Um, I, but I'm really, really keen to kind of like try and break down these barriers because I think there's still a lot of people who can't you know stop work for three months and commit to a business they can't you know relocate to where it is you know amazing place that these these startup incubators are um because they've got commitments but it doesn't mean they haven't got amazing ideas and they wouldn't be you know awesome founders um so I'm really keen to talk about what benefits they are and, and try and you know facilitate some of that benefit outside of the world of an incubator or an accelerator um, so yeah, I think it's it's really important people know what that. goes on behind closed doors. Yeah, and, and it reminds me that when I was, because I've I've kind of been in this, and we've talked about this a bunch of times. I've been in this kind of entrepreneur stage a yep. bunch of times, and actually for a long time, like slowly moving my way up closer and closer to being a founder, uh -huh. um, and kind of trying to figure out what the startup is or what I could offer in the to the world, and when I first started to kind of investigate accelerator and incubator programs, my first thought was like, how much funding can I get? Okay. And so that's, already selling that yourself out. Me, Day one. <laughs> well, like, yeah, I'm like, I need to like, if I'm going to do this, if I want uh -huh. it to be big, if it's a tech thing, blah, 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 I need to have some funding. I need to be able to quit my job or like whatever else. And I think so many people are in that, um, chicken and egg situation of, yeah having ha, wanting to work on something having some kind of problem space idea space that they want to kind of work in but don't see that it's a viable there's a viable way to do that whilst carrying on with businesses and i yeah. my advice would always be of course now yeah. like do it as small as you can prove it out before you do anything big long-term commitment wise yep. figure it out from a side gig perspective work on a little project in the evenings stop watching netflix for an hour a night and just focus on that yeah. um you know there's so many ways that you can find time to be able to put things you know dedicate to that and i think it's a limiting belief that we have that is like in order to be that i need to get something in order to be an entrepreneur i need to get some funding that means i can you know dedicate yeah. full time or whatever to this and that's a limiting belief yeah but that was my thing was like how much funding can i get if i apply to one of these these places but i know now that that's probably the wrong approach and actually a not the only thing that you get and probably not the most important thing that you get yeah. with accelerators what what are your thoughts around that um, I think there's a few things. Um, I think there's definitely, there is a classic, there's a catch 22, um, about how do you get funding if you haven't got proof and you can only get proof by a, a product, a prototype, an MVP, especially if it's a chunkier bit of work. Um, and you can't get that proof cause you haven't built the thing because you haven't got the money. And it's actually something that I'm trying to address. I've got a stealth startup at the moment, um, which I'm trying to address that, that problem. But- um, Can you tell any more? I, well, Was yeah, it just very like how- It is very, that's why I'm wearing black. I'm like... <laughs> so if you want to know more, what I wear people, now, you better subscribe like... because one day it might come out. <laughs> when I'm about to launch it, you'll see colour will back, come back in my life and I'll stop yeah. being like in Yellow jump mode. will be back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, um, I think there's a few things. I think that, um, depends what kind of funding you want. Um, I mean, I work, so the, 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 um, the incubator I work with at the moment, they, um, they look to help people secure, uh, angel funding. Um, and often the angels, when I, so I was speaking to the guy this week, actually about, what's the appetite in the angel world at the moment? What are people looking for? Um, what are they about? How's that thing? And a lot of them actually, if you've not got a clear repeat, and this is, this is his perspective, if you've not got a clear repeatable way of making money or you understand what that formula looks like and you need to build the thing, they're just like, go and bootstrap it, go and work it out how you do it. And it's like, uh, uh, um, okay, how do I do that? So, you know, mm referring back to the stuff that we spoke about last week in terms of experimentation and getting some of that evidence, you know, often you can actually 
through concierge trials or doing things manually, you can actually, with not a lot of tech, sometimes get letters of intent or some revenue or something like that that, that proves it's worthwhile their investment. Um, you can, if there's specific appetite for a certain type of you know um, technology or, or sector, sometimes a bit more flexibility. But personally, I think you know from what I've seen in terms of these these incubators, it's that whole sense of community it's a case of momentum you know you're talking about how you can give up netflix for a night well actually if you're in a 12-week program and there's you're going to be shoved on stage in front of some people at the end of it you're gonna have to get your shit together which is amazing you either drop out or you you do the thing um and i think having that kind of focus having people holding you accountable um for me a huge thing is that psychological safety so um i'm doing research at the moment on how to create resilience in um, startup founders um and what it actually takes to run a startup successfully um from a, an innovation and, and psychology perspective um and generally speaking it's it's the there was a lot of research that was done um, about two years ago, I think it was, um, and it's one of the major falls is people don't have that entrepreneurial mindset. They don't have that shift. So it might be a case of a technical founder and they're not concentrating on the right things in terms of commerciality. Um, or you know, people don't, they don't know what they don't know. And actually, these incubators or accelerators create mentor networks you've got coaches and advisors there you've got people you can learn from in terms of technical approaches you know, how to talk that language so actually then if you're going out and bootstrapping something um or you're working with an external build company you understand what they're talking about and you're less likely to get bitten in the ass um that definitely that guidance um having i mean i've always described myself as um you know, a, a cheerleader and a critical friend. So having those people where, you know, it kind of hopefully removes that fear of failure a little bit. Brenny Brown talks a lot about the fact that you've got to be vulnerable to be creative and innovative and all those things. And actually the more you can be vulnerable but in a secure environment due to psychological safety, actually that's when you have the better ideas. That's when you come up with, you know, the cooler stuff um, and you have that confidence to go and fail fast um and all these kind of like mantras the startup world has you know it's all good and well saying like fail fast just be out there well if it's if it's terrifying to even test something you're not going to try and embrace failure um so i think this is there's things like that there's also like you say the legals the paper process you know and i think as long as you're aligned with a st uh, an incubator that is it suits your agenda and you're not a pawn in their agenda because I've seen that um, be be problematic, and actually, in terms of um, you know what they want to back, what they and you know you might have a great startup idea, but you, almost like your business doesn't fit that agenda, or you know it it can be hard. Um, and if they're yeah, they, there's a lot of watch out. So I think it's that case of you know, making sure you're picking the right one, understanding what your goals are and what you you want. Um, and like you say, in terms of there's that that incubation process and kind of getting you ready for. You know, having the evidence and it, it being a thing potentially and going to speak to investors. Um, and then you've got the accelerators where it's a case of like, right, okay, you, you've kind of proven things, proven the business model. You might have a couple of customers. It's like, right, okay, now how can we shoot you to the moon? Um, because even when you've got a lump of cash and you've built the thing and you're like, well, I've got marketing funds. You know, as a startup entrepreneur, like how on earth do I market this thing? Often that won't be your speciality and trying to find the right people to do that is incredibly hard. So yeah, these kind of like networks and, and just having that bit of support, it can be, you know, as long as you can give up the equity and you're happy to do that, they can be invaluable. Yeah, I think that's 100% um, right. And I think the, that point about entrepreneurial mindset that you talked about here is, it's a foundational piece yeah. that is so difficult to grasp, I think, particularly for people that have worked in a different environment. If you're used to more of a corporate way of working, it's very unusual to kind of take that, you know, experimentation led approach. Yep. Normally, either someone more senior comes up with an idea yeah. and you have to deliver it without any, uh, you know, it's, it's, it goes from idea to execution. And if it fails, it fails and whatever else. I actually wrote a paper and I've just quickly grabbed it. I wrote a paper, uh, like a, an academic paper for mm -hmm. London University about entrepreneurial mindset and how to 
teach on entrepreneurship within universities and I, I couldn't find a good definition of entrepreneurial mindset although people were starting to talk about it so i i said that quote if the definition of an entrepreneur is someone who makes money by starting their own business, especially when this involves seeing new opportunities and taking risks, mm -hmm. then it follows that the, a convincing description of uh, or definition of entrepreneurial mindset could be someone with the behaviours and attitudes to continually imp improve their lives or their impact on the world, especially when this involves seeking new opportunities and taking risks. So it's oh. that like, what I, what I like about that is that it doesn't, it doesn't predicate itself on being an entrepreneur. It's not a noun, it's a verb. It's a way of thinking, a way of behaving, an attitude, yeah. a set of values and beliefs that you have about yourself and the wider world that means like, I can do something, I ha can have an impact in this. And I kind of like that, that way of looking at it because it doesn't mean you have to be a founder to yeah. be an entrepreneur or have an entrepreneurial mindset. And I think that, rung true with me twice there's two moments just quick stories um in the first kind of major startup that i was involved in i was a product director of um pretty high growth actually startup in in kind of immersed in this east london tech startup scene the founder had a successful exit i was thrust into this incredible like leadership team and i was really like getting that imposter syndrome i was like should I be here with like someone that was on the board of Virgin previously that had like someone else that had tens of millions of pounds of in, of like, um, you know, exit and all these incredible people. And then like, you know, talking to the founder about that. And he was like, you're the most entrepreneurial person that I've seen. You just haven't started your business yet. And I was like, wow, like that is amazing. <laughs> so I urge anyone, my advice to you, regardless of who you are, yeah. is you can be entrepreneurial. If you think about things in the right way if you think about risk opportunities and how you can de-risk and experiment then that is an amazing thing and you can totally do it exactly. and I said this this is my second story here really quickly because I was with my eldest son he was he would have been about 13 at the time and Oliver and he was doing some homework about Richard Branson and I was kind of like, oh, tell me, you know, what about, about Richard Branson? And he was like, well, he's an entrepreneur. And I was like, oh, OK, do you think you could be an entrepreneur? And he was like, no, no, don't be ridiculous. That's for people like him, not for, not like pe for people like me. Oh, and I was, and my heart just sank, you know, his school. And it said this yeah. in like the actual words in this textbook were like people like Richard Branson are entrepreneurs. And I was like, that is fucking awful. I'm so sorry yeah. that kids are being taught this in school, that they don't have the ability to be entrepreneurial. And it really broke my heart. And I worked with him a lot mm -hmm. to see that actually he is and can be an entrepreneur. He is entrepreneurial. You know, the he way he thinks about king the world now. right now. Sorry? Is he a tuck shop king? <laughs> tuck shop, yeah. <laughs> Laminate stands, tuck shops. Like, yeah, he's making little things in lockdown and selling them. Um, Amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, so like anyone can do it. and uh, But yeah, that's so disheartening when you believe that. And like we've all been there, right? I've had the same thing about creativity. Yeah. Whereas people told me I wasn't creative. Therefore, you never think of yourself as creative. And it can be a really damaging thing. So Massively. that was a long conversation about entrepreneurial mindset yeah but that's a power of something like this incubators and accelerators that can either reinforce and build on yeah. like a, a seed of an entrepreneurial mindset or indeed like get people to think completely differently about how they view the world precisely and this thing is it is like seeking opportunities identifying how much risk is associated with them, mitigating that risk and working if it's the right one and you know pivoting and moving and being nimble and all those great things and not being too wedded to stuff and and yeah I mean I once had a, a similar thing like I someone once told me I wasn't strategic and that is so in the back of my head now and I'm just like and that's not the case like I work on strategies all the time I've worked on strategies for major people like you know Everton now in their partnership departments. I've worked on strategies for startups. I've raised over, we've got somewhere in the region of like 10 million quid now with startups and through EIS and SEIS. And that's all through having a strategy, like having a plan as to how we're going to get that evidence, etc. So if people tell you you're not something and you want to be it, 
Flick on the face. Like go yes. and go and find people who can. Yeah. Um. I had a really. I, I was on a coaching session yesterday, and this this lady, and it was like she she told me this thing, and I don't know where she got it from. I think she watched something, and it was a bit cheesy, but I really really loved it, and it really resonated. She was saying that you kind of like everyone has like a little flame in their hands, and you know the people who kind of blow at them get them away from you as far as possible because your job is to kind of keep this thing alight. And when it's flickering, you be around people who notice it's flickering and will come and help you and nurture. And and that's the thing. Like those, That's what a good incubator should be. It's a case of, um, you know, you can, you can have open and honest conversations with them. You can say, I don't think this is working. Like, what am I doing? How can I better it, etc. cetera? Um, because people who don't really achieve much in these accelerated situations or incubator situations are the ones who are like, I know best. This is the thing I'm doing. Um, you really have to have evidence of that and rather than just like, you know, random self-belief. Um, but a lot of the times it's a case of like the coaches are really good at kind of like unpicking things, you know, working out what we need to do. Just because you've said you're going to do X doesn't mean that this fate accompli. Like how can we move it? How can we evolve it? How can we change it? Um, yeah, and if you're not open to that coaching process and development don't don't go in one because there's other ways for you can t- trace down money um yeah you need to be open to the process and lean into the process don't just go and g- there's a box ticking exercise because you think that you're going to get access to a load of mentors and network because to be fair even the, the mentors and things they'll see straight through you they'll know they'll know you know i've i've seen it before now where it's a case of um i've I've seen cohorts, and it, it's some time ago now, but I've seen people in cohorts, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting one. And then when it's a case of, like, they meet mentors, the mentor's like, no thanks. And I'm like, but it's a really interesting idea. It's right for They're like, can't work with that founder. They're not malleable. They're not interested in yeah. what I've got to say. They just want my network, and I'm not prepared to give them my network if they're not prepared to do the work, not only on the business, but on themselves. Um, so, yeah, I think it's really, it's really, really key that you develop yourself. Yeah, and it reminds me of that phrase, which I'll probably get wrong. Um, uh, strong beliefs loosely held, right? So I think as a startup founder, as anyone that's doing something big or potentially doing something big, occupying a lot of their energy and their time and their, you know, whatever else, you've got to have strong beliefs. You've got to believe that this is a thing that's going to work, that's going to be needed by people. You've got to have that conviction. Yeah. But not so it's to the point where it's clouding your judgment and, and, and making you uh, so fixed that you're not accepting different ways of looking at things. That you're not open to those feedback okay. and reflections. I think it's strong, strong beliefs around what it is you're trying to do, but they're very loosely held. Yeah. And so you can shift, you can move away, you can pivot, you can change things. You can listen and be open to the advice that you might disagree with, but if it's coming at you from a person of experience, from someone that you trust and you value, which hopefully a lot of the mentors are in these yeah. accelerators and incubators, then hopefully that just gives you that little glimmer of like, okay, what if I tried that other thing? What if I did something different? Yeah. And that's probably enough to kind of set the momentum going on, on a different way of looking at something. Definitely, because if you've got the different thing about the different stages, it's a case of idea generation, testing and tweaking and then going out and selling and uh, if you've like you say if you've had that that reflection and and feedback in the earlier stages then when you go out to sell you can have that conviction and confidence you still take the approach of like i want feedback and i actively you know look for it because even that is just a confident place to be um and on the on the flip side actually i had um a conversation yesterday with a founder and one thing I will say if anyone is is my side of the fence um and is giving advice it's it's harsh words spoken softly as my good friend Ian says because often you can break people and if you are you know people are seeking your advice and your mentorship or and you know you might not be from an accelerator coach background etc but if you're out there acting as an NED or an advisor and you're not considerate of people's feelings at least slightly when you're delivering (laughs) potentially bad news i'm sorry but you're a bit of a dick um and you shouldn't and you better be shit out of what you do to be getting away with acting like that because i think that yeah there's if you're if you're going to be in in the the business of working with people's hopes dreams lives things that they've worked on, on on a very long time um 
yeah, you need to you need to be considerate of how something might land, and it might need to be said. And like, you know, I, I'm a critical friend. I will tell someone straight up, but hopefully, it'll come with a you know, this is what we're going to do about it. It's like you know, even if it's like that shit sandwich approach, you know, don't just go that shit. Okay, well, <laughs> t- like tell me why. Tell me, give, uh, can you can you you know expand on that a little bit? Go tell me something. Not like just go away and do it again. Well okay, I've come to you for help and guidance and you, yeah, so that's my little rant um, no, <laughs> the last right. 24 I, hours. <laughs> I love that as well and it resonates with me because of a, a very similar advice that I had once when I was doing teaching practice way, way, way back, mm-hmm. long time ago. I was a teacher for eight years and um, in my very, my first year of like teacher practice, the lecturer, the education lecturer said to us, uh, all, as all these teachers, this is, the, this is the one memory that I have from that um, PGCE. Uh, he said, um, as a teacher and as a mentor, you have the power to help someone grow, yeah. but you equally have the power to break someone. Yeah. And it's far easier, actually, to break someone <laughs> than it is to help someone grow. The really? easy thing to say is that shit, what are you, what are, what are you doing? You yeah. know, And straight away you've lost that person forever. They will never feel comfortable in that environment again. But yeah, you have the power to break someone. I think that's, um, and and it's your role, it's your job. Actually, a question. Do you think it's, I was gonna say it's your role to help that person grow, Mm -hmm. but then I pause because is it your role to help that person grow? Is it your role to help that business grow? And is it about the founder and the founding team or is it about specifically about the business? And it may be different between yeah. accelerators and incubators, different styles and whatever else. But in your, in your experience, yeah. what's, what, where do you, if you could f- prioritize, if you could, f- if you focus on one area, what would it be? Uh, personally, I'm, I'm all about the founder because if you don't have, but I'm a, I'm a coach, I'm a psychologist. I love that kind of I'm people, people person. Um, but if you don't have that leadership team that's equipped and understands They won't have a creative and resilient workforce, especially when, you know, you work in tech, you know, things are constantly on on fire um, and everyone's just in panic mode because even the best technical teams, the shit hits the fan and they need to do stuff. And it's like, right, another day, what's going to happen today? Let's go. Um, So I think that when you equip the founder with the right right skill base and the right, you know, the right principles, then they know where to look for help. They look for guidance. They can go outside of, of their, their network to, to seek out those things. Um, mm-hmm. Because there's so much, there's so many demands on people. And that's the thing, if you don't use that and you don't, you know, you try and do everything yourself, you take it all on board, you won't grow the business. It's that simple. If you don't look to understand, you know, whether it be data and metrics or how your team's working or what your customer base is doing, the business won't grow. It's not a case of you can just do it all yourself and, you know, you've just got this magical psychic ability to, to facilitate these things. It doesn't work like that. So I think that it's, you know, you need to... It's really key. It's really key to work on the founder. Um, and I think mm. that the, the more that they can... And, and there'll be lots of different ways. You know, coaching suits you some suits some people. Mentoring networks, you know, um, being parts of masterminds where you actually it's other other uh, startups that you're bouncing ideas off. That sense of community. Um, a lot of people are often scared because if they go and say like this thing is failing in, in my business, uh, people are going to be judgy about it. And actually, it's almost like well that, that business is done. Well, it's not because it can be rectified it can be changed it can be evolved etc by seeking that help and support especially in the initial stages um just to get some kind of momentum and you know rather than i mean i've I've speak to founders where you know they've made they've made millions but they still aren't quite comfortable in the world they're still not doing the right things like how can i optimize this thing whether it be business wise or personally um and a lot of it tends to come down to mindset and approach for me um and yeah if you're if you're prepared to be out there transparent having the conversations iterating etc um yeah i think there's in terms of both you know lean startup and design thinking and coaching have a lot of the same principles um 
going out there, testing things, seeing what works for you, having like a personal operating system, um, mm. understanding yourself, understanding what you need to do in preparation of an investor pitch, for example, um, how you react to feedback. If you, the more you reflect on your own metrics and data, um, yeah, you can definitely grow things and you'll take that approach and apply them to your business and your staff, and et cetera. Um, so yeah, it's really important. Yeah. Um, I, it reminds me of actually quite painful in some ways, but how isolating and lonely early stage, particularly early stage, yeah. I think actually it goes on. It can, it continues way beyond the early stage actually, but founding a startup is an incredibly lonely endeavor at times. Even if there are people around you, yeah. it feels sometimes like you're the only person that really understands what you're going through. You're the only person that's experiencing this high pressure situation if you've got people that work for you or you're working with they're often looking at you for the answers you need to be able to provide that guidance and support to other people but you're often not getting it yourself and this is where I think not just accelerators and incubators but actually a wider network of and group of people that you can tap into for their expertise their knowledge their support just like just that am I going mad kind of conversation yeah you know that sometimes you just need it's not about accountability necessarily it's about um people understanding the kind of shit that you're going through because it's fucking hard yeah. um and i think that's so important as well which again it it carries on it's important during those very early stages but i think it's incredibly important to carry on with so i think that finding mentors finding people that can help you at different stages of your development as a founder as an entrepreneur, as someone with an entrepreneurial mindset, or, or indeed through the stages of your startup growth are so important as well. Definitely. I was speaking to a founder yesterday um, and they were saying it's it's hard because, well, firstly, she likes to be around people. It's just positive energy, and but she doesn't want just like it to be like full off. It's a case of like it needs to be constructive positivity, all those kind of things. And she said, you know, a lot of her friends don't are struggling to understand the journey she's on and because you don't have that you know joint experience she's finding a lot of new people and it's, it's strange because at a certain age in your life you don't think you're going to find a whole new community a whole new set of friends etc but it's that it's that evolution because you need to have people who get you and get what you're going through it's incredibly it's incredibly important and that like you say even when people have teams around them they're still being looked to as a leader and you've still got to, there's still got to be a certain level of composure and almost like the, you know, the swan kind of thing. And, you know, you can be very open and transparent and collaborative, but there's still got to be, you know, you're looking to me and I'm going to drive this thing forward. But whether it be other founders that you work with, a coach, mentors, etc., people who've been there, people who get it. Um, there's a big difference between, you know, a, a coach and a mentor. A mentor is often someone who's done it before. And actually, like, in my experience is X. A coach will be someone who, um, if you take the really classic approach um, in terms of, like, the, the mindset, etc., coaching, it's, okay, well, talk to me about this thing. What's the, what's the underlying belief there? How can we, you know, what do you think you can do about it? How can you come up with that? And that's a really empowering thing. Um, and I think the third one in that in terms of is advisors. You know, I do advisory work on like e-commerce businesses or like if you tweak that and you do this thing then da, 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 and that's more technical kind of advice um and it might be like product based for example so very different things um but ha just having somebody that you can have that kind of like sp safe space for conversation is really really key um and often someone who's not necessarily in it with you or that close to you so there's no massive impact and you don't get that vulnerability hangover afterwards is yeah really important I think I've learned a lot. Me too. I think a lot of other people have. I was going to ask you a question, which is like, if people are thinking about possibly going into an incubator, what should they do? But mm -hmm. I'm going to jump in with the answer, if you don't mind. Go for it. Or an answer. Okay. And we haven't discussed this, but hopefully it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, no, Spencer, you Homework. Shit. We love people to have a bit of homework. <laughs> Right. Yes, 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 yes. If you are thinking about joining an incubator, if it's crossing your mind, if you've got some ideas, if you don't know where to go with it, reach out, I think, right? Yeah. Like, A, reach out to you for advice around 
whether or not they're ready, whether or not this is the right approach, whether or not there's actually alternatives um, that they could go with. Uh, also reach out if you've got an idea but you haven't validated it. We talked about that lo- last week. Yeah. Reach out and we'll help you to validate your idea or figure out how to validate your ideas to kind of see whether there's some sense in it. I would yeah. say personally, I'd go like reach out on LinkedIn. I don't know, LinkedIn, yeah. the yeah. best tool for you as well, probably. That would be awesome. Yes, definitely. Yep. Yeah. So reach out to us on LinkedIn. If you're, if you don't want to kind of put some, put a comment into the, ch- into the uh, YouTube, um, because if you know open comments or whatever else that might be a thing reach out privately get us on linkedin um spencer airs rebecca Rebecca stockdale Stockdale. Stockdale. that's the one Um, (laughs) we know each other so well spencer uh i did know that of course um now i'm digging myself a deeper hole (laughs) stockworth stock stock something yeah bex Reach out Bex, to Bex, Bex or Span um, <laughs> yeah, on LinkedIn. And yeah, we'd love to come, have a conversation, right? The more you can fast forward as well, the ones I see that like really do well are the ones that come in and kind of have... So for example, in the, the cohort that I've recently spoken to, you know, some of them have already done the groundwork. They already have user panels created. They already have done a business model canvas. They've already done da 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 It may not be... A thing of perfection and all these things for evolution always um but actually then go right okay as a you know how what's your feedback on this how can we iterate it etc um and often they don't spend the first month or so like learning the foundations they've kind of got them and they can ask the really interesting questions to get the real value from it and they know exactly what they're saying in front of mentors they know exactly what they want um and often then they are they've got you know some lightweight prototyping but it means that when they're in there and they've got access to, you know, amazing designers or people that can build their products, they already know what they want to do. So they get far more out of it because they've done that preparation work. So yeah, it, it, it not only does it make your entrance into an incubator far more likely because you've got that evidence, et cetera. It's not, I've got a hunch that X, Y, and Z would work or be of interest. It's like, these are the conversations I've had. This is the research I've done. This is, yeah, the evidence. And then you hit the ground running Um, because three months is not a long time, especially if you're in learning mode for the first third of it, half of it. So, yeah, the more work we can do ahead of people going into incubators, 100 percent would love to help. There you go. So it should be nothing stopping anyone from getting going. If there is anything that's holding you back, uh, my big thing would be subscribe if you're not. Because we're going to be doing this every week. We're going to be having these kinds of conversations, talking about how you can, the things that you can do tomorrow in the next half an hour, that are going to help you with your business. And as we go through this content, we'll probably reach, not just the ideation, not just the early stages, but the growth stages, the kind of finding your first customer stages. We're going to be talking about all of that stuff, hopefully so that you can go ahead and create amazing businesses of the future you can learn you can develop you can figure out what works and you can try and make sure that it doesn't fail and beat the stats exactly yeah i'm i'm thinking over the next few weeks months we potentially talk about my progress in my stealth startup and i can show you like what i'm doing how i'll hold myself accountable via an audience (laughs) to see you know how these things evolve iterate etc you know there is there's definitely work to be done i mean i as i said i think it was in the last episode i would put my idea through an incubator even though i'm a practitioner and have worked in them because I, i genuinely believe in them because i think it's important to have someone else there with you on the path um yeah just to watch out a second pair of eyes look out for the pitfalls etc um so yes but you can and you never stop learning that. right <laughs> regardless of where you are you never stop learning yeah infinite learning exactly there we go okay amazing rebecca thank you spencer it's been a pleasure as always <laughs> pleasure thank you all for watching this far uh yes. you know what to do Have a great day. Like, share, subscribe. There we go. (laughs) Smashed it.